Hello everyone and welcome to our today's class. It is our third lesson on the topic reflection at curved surfaces. So as usual, let me commence by giving you the quote of the day, which states that just because you believe that your opinion is right does not necessarily mean that the opinions of others are wrong. And remember that the number 9 or integer 9 becomes number 6 when viewed upside down. So we'll discuss this quote at the end of our class today. So today we are looking at a graphical construction of ray diagrams and let's commence by looking at, at an example involving the same. So the example reads that an object of height 10 millimeters is placed 50 millimeters in front of a concave mirror of focal length 30 millimeters. Full stop. By scale drawing, determine A, uh, position of the image, B, the size of the image, and C, the nature of the image. So as usual, by use of scale drawing, that means you have to construct it. So uh, we are dealing with a concave mirror. So this is how we represent a concave mirror in terms of uh, ray diagrams. So we did say that a concave mirror, the outer side is always highly polished or highly silvered while the inner side is the reflecting surface. So this is my concave mirror here. Of course, it is uh, mounted on a supporter such that it is supported high. Then uh, the position where the concave mirror actually passes through is what we call the pole of the concave mirror. So to locate the position of the image, first of all, we determine uh, the pole and the principal focus and of course the center of curvature. So to determine the principal focus, we are given the focal length. We are told that an object of height 10 millimeters is placed 50 millimeters in front of a concave mirror of focal length 30 millimeters. So remember that the focal length is usually the distance from the pole to the principal focus. So uh, we are choosing any suitable scale. So you just choose a suitable scale that will fit on your the graph paper that you have been provided with like for my case here i'm choosing uh each box that is one two three boxes to represent 30 millimeters which is my focal length so that means that each box is actually 10 millimeters such that from the pole this is 10 millimeters 20 millimeters 30 millimeters so because the focal length is 30 millimeters it means the distance from the pole to the principal focus will also be 30 millimeters. So in short, I'm saying that three boxes are horizontally, three boxes are representing 30 millimeters, which, which means that uh, one box is equivalent to 10 millimeters. That is for the case of my horizontal scale. So uh, three boxes, I get the to the principal focus. Now remember that the radius of curvature is usually twice the focal length. So if the focal length is represented by three boxes, then the center of curvature or the radius of curvature must be represented by three times two boxes, which is of course equal to six boxes. Alternatively, we can say that if the focal length is 30 millimeters, then the radius of curvature must be 60 millimeters. So remember the radius of curvature is usually the distance uh, from the pole to the center of curvature. So if the focal length is 3 units, then the center of curvature must be at the 6th unit. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is where we'll have our center of curvature. Then after locating the position of uh, center of curvature and of course the position of the principal focus, the next thing is to locate what we have been given. We are, we are told that an object of height 10 millimeters is placed 50 millimeters in front of a concave mirror. So if just say that horizontally we are choosing one box to represent 10 millimeters. Now what about the 50 millimeters? That is where my object is placed. So if one box is 10 millimeters, then 50 millimeters will be at the uh, fifth. Uh, it will be at the uh, fifth box. So we have uh, for 50 millimeters. So we have uh, the one box is 10 millimeters, 20, 30, 40. 50. So this is the position where my object is located. Remember, there is no formula for finding the scale. Huh? You just choose an appropriate scale that will fit on your given graph paper. Then they have told me that the height of the object is 10 millimeters. So vertically, I'm choosing one box to represent 
five millimeters. I'm choosing one box to represent five millimeters, such that for the case of uh, ten millimeters, it will actually be two boxes. So you just choose an appropriate scale that uh, will fit on your graph paper. So I'm saying that vertically, I'm saying that one box represents five millimeters, whereas horizontally, one box represents ten millimeters. So if this is the height of the object, then this this represents 10 millimeters, which are the two boxes. After locating my uh, position of center of curvature and the principal focus, and of course, the position of the object, the next thing is to use my ray diagrams to locate the position of the image because I'm required to find the position of the image. So of course, we use any two relevant rays. In case you are not familiar with the rays we are, we are using, you just refer from my previous class. We did discuss the four rays that are used to locate uh, images in ray diagrams. Maybe just to remind you, the first ray that we use is that a ray through C is reflected along the same path for the case of concave mirrors and a ray appearing to pass through C is also reflected along the same path for the case of convex mirrors. The second one we did say that a ray close and parallel to the principal axis is reflected through F for concave mirrors and array close and parallel to the principal axis is reflected in such a way that it appears to emerge from F for the case of convex mirrors. The third one we did say that array through F is reflected parallel to the principal axis for concave mirrors and array appearing to be directed to F is reflected parallel to the principal axis for the case of convex mirrors. Then the fourth one we did say that array at an angle to the principal axis and incident to the pole is reflected in such a way that the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. So those are the four rays. So you choose any two relevant rays from th those four, then you apply it to locate your uh, image. So then to apply the rays, you need to determine the type of uh, mirror that you are dealing with. For the case of concave mirrors, the application of rays are different. For the case of convex mirrors, of course, the application of the rays will also be different. So because for our case we are using concave mirrors, then I will use one of the rays which stated that array uh, through C, array of light through C is reflected through the same path for the case of concave mirrors. So if this is my object, then the ray of light always emanates from the object and they end at the where the image will be located. So if I have a ray of light passing through C, that is, uh, the ray of light moves until it meets my concave mirror, then it must be reflected through the same same path. So the ray originates from here as, you, as it is indicated by the arrow moving upwards. Upon reflection on the concave mirror, it is reflected through the same same path downwards. So a ray of light through C is reflected through the same path for the case of concave mirrors. Then I use another second ray which states that a ray of light close and parallel to the principal axis is reflected through F for the case of concave mirrors. So array of light uh, which is close and parallel to the principal axis is reflected through F. F is the principal focus. It's reflected through F for the case of concave mirrors. Then the point of intersection of my two rays represents the head of my image. So this will be the head of my image then you just draw a vertical line, which is of course parallel to your uh, uh, mirror here, the concave mirror. So array of light, so you just draw a straight line, uh, joining to the, uh, that is from the point of intersection of your rays to the principal axis. So this is what is representing my image. So this is my image. So I hope you've seen how, we, how, we, how we've located the image. So you can choose any two relevant rays so if you used maybe another third ray, it could still take you through the same same point, through the same same point. For example, if I used a ray which says that a ray of light through F is reflected parallel to the principal axis, it will still come at this particular point where I have the head of my image. A ray of light uh, through F is reflected parallel to the principal axis. So you can you are seeing that it will still come here. So you just choose any two relevant rays, uh, then they will help you to locate your image. Then after locating my image, then remember that for the case of concave mirrors, 
whenever an image is on the same side as the object that image will always be real so real images are usually located with the full lines whereas virtual images in most cases which are formed behind the mirror they will always be uh, represented with dotted lines so because the image is a uh, real or it's formed on the same side as my object and this is a concave mirror then my image is represented by full lines because it is a real image then uh, remember that we are required to find the position of the image so position of the image represents the image distance that is the distance of the image measured from the pole so the position of the image will be given by the distance mp the distance mp that is the distance from where the image is located measured from the pole now horizontally we did say that one box uh, one box was representing 10 millimeters because if this is my focal length one two three so those are 30 millimeters so in terms of the horizontal scale one box was representing uh, 30 millimeters so if uh, three boxes uh, that is for the case of uh, focal length uh, if three boxes are representing 30 millimeters then what about the number of boxes from the pole to where my image is located so from the pole i have one two three four five six seven point five boxes so if three boxes for the case of uh, focal length is equivalent to 30 millimeters what about 7.5 boxes so this will be 7.5 boxes divided by three boxes times 30 millimeters which of course gives you 75 millimeters so that means the position of the image is 75 millimeters from the mirror alternatively you can just say that if one box is representing 10 millimeters then this is 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 75 so you are still getting your 75 millimeters so the position of the image is 75 millimeters from the mirror then part b we are required to find the size of the image the size of the image they want us to find the height of the image now that means uh, in terms of height we'll be using the vertical scale so vertically we did say that one box uh, one box uh, was representing five millimeters such that the height of the object was 10 millimeters so this is five millimeters five millimeters you get 10 five plus five you get 10 then that means uh, they want us to find the size of the image the size of the image so if two boxes are representing 10 millimeters, if two boxes are representing 10 millimeters for the case of my object, then what about the number of boxes forming my image? So the image is one, two, three boxes. So if two boxes for the case of uh, image, for the case of object are representing 10 millimeters, what about three boxes for the image? So it will be three boxes by by two boxes times 10 millimeters which is equivalent to 15 millimeters so that means the size of my image is actually 15 millimeters alternatively you can just say that if one box uh, was representing five millimeters what about three boxes so this is five millimeters 10 millimeters 15 millimeters so the size of the image or the height of the image is actually 15 millimeters then lastly we are required to find the nature of the image the nature of the image that is what are the characteristics of the image formed so the nature of the image because this is a concave mirror and the image is formed on the same side of the mirror that is on the front side of the mirror as the object then it means the image is actually real so remember for the case of concave mirrors whenever an object uh, whenever an image is formed on the same side uh, on the same side of the mirror as the object then such an image is said to be real remember we did say that uh, real images are always focused on the screen while virtual images cannot be focused on the screen because they are formed by apparent intersection of the rays of light while real images are formed by actual intersection of the rays so actual remember actual rays are represented by full lines so as you can see a ray close and parallel to the principal axis is reflected through f then a ray through c is reflected through the same path for the case of concave mirrors so these are full lines uh, meaning these are real rays so uh, an image formed by use of real rays uh, then that produces a real image which is of course focused on the screen 
Then uh, two, we look at another example. So the example reads a concave mirror, uh, a convex. We are now dealing with a convex mirror. A convex mirror of focal length nine centimeters produces an image on its axis, axis six centimeters away uh, from the mirror. Full stop. If the image is three centimeters high, determine by scale drawing A, the object distance from the mirror, B, the size of the object. So, uh, of course, as usual, you locate the image. Yeah? You identify the kind of uh, mirror that you are using. In this case, we are using convex mirrors. So, this is how we represent convex mirrors in terms of ray diagrams. So, remember, convex mirrors are also called diverging mirrors. Therefore, the inner side uh, is always highly uh, silvered. Uh, then the outer side is the reflecting surface. So the inner side is the is the one that is highly polished, while the outer side is the left unpolished, which is the reflecting surface. So this is how we represent convex mirrors in terms of ray diagram. So compare it with uh, our previous example, you will see a difference uh, uh, in terms of how we represent concave and convex mirrors in terms of ray diagrams. Then after that, the first thing is to identify your pole. Of course, the pole is always along the mirror. Uh, because the pole is usually at the center of the mirror. Then the second thing is to identify the position of center of curvature and the position of the principal focus. So to uh, it is important to remember that concave mirrors will always have uh, the principal focus and the center of curvature on the uh, reflecting surface of the mirror. That is on this on the left hand side on the left hand side or on the reflecting surface of the mirror. Whereas convex mirrors, because convex mirrors are uh, produced, uh, in most cases they produce virtual images. They produce virtual images. It means for convex mirrors, the images are always formed behind the mirror. So if images are formed behind the mirror, then it means convex mirrors will always have their principal focus and the center of curvature behind the mirror. So for the case of concave mirrors, F and C were on this side. But for the case of convex mirrors f and c are always behind the mirror so that is a very important point to note so when you are locating f and c if you are dealing with convex mirrors they will always be behind the mirror but if you are dealing with the concave mirrors they will always be in front of the mirror so uh to identify the principal focus we need uh to have our focal length so we are told that a convex mirror of focal length nine centimeters so the focal length is nine centimeters so remember focal length is always the distance from the pole to the principal focus and for the case of convex mirrors the principal focus is always behind the mirror so the focal length we measure it from the pole towards this direction for the case of convex mirrors but if it was a concave mirror we'll, we will measure the focal length from the pole towards this other side why because a concave mirror always have a real principal focus whereas a convex mirror always have an imaginary or a virtual principal focus and also the center of curvature now it's time to choose our scale so we are saying that a focal length nine centimeters so i've let one two three four point five so i'm letting four point five boxes to represent my nine centimeters so this is my uh, horizontal scale so i'm letting five boxes to represent nine centimeters so remember, the radius of curvature is always twice the princip uh, the focal length. So if focal length is represented by 1, 2, 3, 4.5 uh, boxes, then the center of curvature must be at the 4.5 times 2 boxes, which is of course 9 boxes. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This is where I will have my center of curvature why because the radius of curvature is the distance from center of curvature measured from the pole and the radius of curvature is always twice the focal length so if the focal length is nine centimeters then the principal then the center of curvature uh, must be at the 18th centimeters that is nine times two so that is how to you locate your f and c remember in some questions you will be given the center of curvature or the radius of curvature so in that case to look to locate the principal focus you just find the uh focal length so if for example if you are given a center of curvature something like 20 centimeters 
then your focal length will be 10 centimeters that is uh, focal length is always half the radius of curvature or alternatively you can say the radius of curvature is always twice the focal length then after locating f and c we need to locate what we have been given whether we are given the image or the object so we are told that a convex mirror of focal length 9 centimeters produces an image on its axis 6 centimeters away from the mirror so we are told that this is the image distance it is the distance of the image from the pole so the image is located at six centimeters away from the mirror six centimeters away from the mirror so we've just said that uh 4.5 boxes are representing nine centimeters 4.5 boxes are representing nine centimeters then what about six centimeters so that will be six centimeters divided by nine centimeters times 4.5 boxes so you calculate that you will get uh 2.5 boxes you get 2.5 boxes or alternatively you can just look at what each box is actually representing each box is representing uh so if 4.5 boxes are equivalent to 9 centimeters what about one box so this will be one box divided by 4.5 times 9 centimeter so that will mean that one box will be equivalent to uh one box will be equivalent to two centimeters so this is two centimeters uh four centimeters then uh, uh five centimeters then six centimeters so if it is six centimeters uh it is on its axis six centimeters away from the mirror so if 4.5 boxes are equals to nine what about six centimeters so six centimeters will give you 2.5 boxes so this is the location of my image this is the location of my image then i'm told that the image is of height three centimeters the image is of height three centimeters again i have to choose a vertical scale so i'm letting two boxes to represent three centimeters so meaning that each box is 1.5 uh, centimeters so if my two boxes are representing three centimeters so this will be uh, the height of my image so this is representing two boxes or three centimeters so it is important to uh, have an appropriate scale that will fit all your required measurements or dimensions then after locating my image and of course f and c i can now apply uh, any two of the rays so remember for the case of uh, convex mirrors we did say that uh, array array uh, array appearing to pass through C is reflected along the same path for the case of convex mirrors. So if I have array of light, I have my C here, that is the center of curvature. So array of light appearing uh, to pass through C, uh, array of light appearing to pass through C, that is the ray of light connecting the tip or the head of my image and C. I just extend this line here. So array of light appearing. Uh, to pass through C is reflected through the same path. That is for the case of convex mirrors. So if my uh, image object is here, then the ray of light must be em emanate from the object. Then after hitting the mirror, it is reflected through the same same path. That is for the case of convex mirror. So the ray that I'm using here is that a ray of light appearing to pass through C is reflected through the same path for convex mirrors. Then I also use another ray here. We said you can just use any two relevant rays. They will actually locate uh, your image. So for the case of convex mirrors, we also said that uh, a ray close and parallel to the principal axis is reflected in such a way that it appears to emerge from F. So if I have a ray of light uh, close and parallel to the principal axis, it has to be reflected in such a way that it appears to be originating or emerging from F. Then, of course, after that, I extend this ray, this side. I also extend this ray, the other side. So the point of intersection of those rays, that represents the tip or the head of my object. That represents the tip of my object. Why? Because rays of light will always emanate or originate from the object, then moving towards my image, moving towards the image. So the point of intersection of those rays is representing my uh, object, is representing my object. So you just connect that line, uh, a, a line which is parallel to my mirror 
and which is uh, perpendicular to the uh, principal axis. Then after locating my object and my image, we now need to answer the questions. Huh? So we are told to determine uh, uh, the object distance from the mirror. So remember the object distance is represented by u, that is the distance from the object measured from the pole. So the distance PO is actually the object distance that is required. So remember from P towards O, we are moving along the horizontal scale. We are moving along the horizontal scale. Now in terms of the horizontal scale, we let, uh, we said that one, two, three, four point five boxes are representing nine centimeters. Four point five boxes are representing nine centimeters. Then what about the number of boxes from the pole to the object? So the number of boxes here are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine boxes. So if 4.5 boxes are equivalent to nine centimeters, what about nine boxes? So it will be nine boxes by, by 4.5 boxes times nine centimeters which is equivalent to 18 centimeters. So the object distance from the mirror is actually 18 centimeters. Alternatively, you can just say that if one box, uh, that is 4.5, 9 by, by 4.5, you get 2. So if one box is representing 2 centimeters, then you just count from here 2 centimeters, 4 centimeters, 6 centimeters, 8 centimeters, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 centimeters. So the object distance from the mirror is actually 18 centimeters then part b the size of the object the size of the object they want us to find the height of the object so height of the object will rep represent will be represented by the distance from point o to o prime that will be the height of the object so the height of the object we are moving vertically meaning we'll be using the vertical scale now vertically we did say that two boxes uh, are representing the height of the image which was uh, three centimeters so if two boxes are representing three centimeters then that means uh what about the number of boxes forming my object so i have one two three four five six boxes so if two boxes that is of the image are equivalent to three centimeters what about six boxes so i'll have six boxes by by two boxes times three centimeters which is equivalent to nine centimeters so the size of the object is actually nine centimeters alternatively you can just say that uh, 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 I divide by two divide by two so that I have one box is equivalent to 1.5 centimeters so if this is 1.5 centimeters then this should be three centimeters this should be six centimeters then that should be nine centimeters so that is how you determine the uh, the size of the object and also uh, the object distance from the mirror next we look at a uh, linear or traverse magnification so magnification simply refers to the ratio of the image size to the object size that is uh, magnification m is equals to height of the image by by height of the object which is also equal to the image distance from the mirror by by the object distance that is magnification you are just comparing uh, to see whether the image has been magnified or diminished uh, that is relative to the object so if we take it in terms of simples magnification is equals to v over u v is the image distance u is the object distance then which is also equal to height of the image by by height of the object so this means that magnification can be equal to magnification can be given by v over u or magnification can also be given by hi over ho or we can also say that v over u is equals to hi over ho hi is the height of the image ho is the height of the object then we look at an example involving magnification and scale drawing so the example reads that a concave mirror of focal length 20 centimeters forms a sharp focused image of a small object on a screen placed at a distance 80 centimeters from the mirror so graphically determine A, the position of the object, B, the linear magnification of the image. So as usual, the first thing is to determine the nature of the image of the mirror that you are dealing with. So these are concave mirror. So this is how we represent concave mirrors diagrammatically. The outer side is shaded while the inner side is the reflecting surface. Then we know that a concave mirror will have its F and C uh, 
towards the reflecting surface huh? that is in front of the mirror so f and c will be in front of the mirror because this is a concave mirror if it was a convex mirror we will draw this uh mirror maybe somewhere like here so that we leave the space for f and c in that case f and c will be behind the mirror that is if it was a convex mirror but for a concave mirror f and c will always be in front of the mirror now to locate your position of f and c you need the focal length so we are told that the focal length is 20 centimeters so that means we have to choose a horizontal scale so in this case i'm choosing one two three four boxes to represent 20 centimeters meaning that each box is actually five centimeters each box is five centimeters now if the focal length is 20 centimeters or is represented by one two three four uh, boxes then that means my radius of curvature will be twice uh, the focal length so if the focal length is four boxes then my radius of curvature must be eight boxes so that is one two three four this is the location of my principal focus because the principal focus is uh is always uh located the distance from the pole to the uh from the pole plus the focal length will give you the position of the principal focus so four five six seven eight so this is where my center of curvature will be located alternatively you are saying that each boxer is representing uh five centimeters so the, if this is five centimeters 10 15 20 25 30 35 40 centimeters so this is my center of curvature after locating that then you we can also locate either the object or the image depending on what you have been given they are saying that it forms a focused uh, image of smaller of small object on a screen placed at a distance 80 centimeters from the mirror so in this case we are given the it forms a sharp focused image we are given the image so we were given the image this is our image which is represented by one two three four boxes now we are told that the image distance the image distance is 80 centimeters from the mirror so horizontally we are saying that each box is representing five centimeters so what about 80 centimeters so one two three four uh so this is five five millimeter five centimeters 10 15 20 25 30 35 40 45 50 55 60 65 70 75 80 centimeters so my image is at the 80 centimeter mark now once you have your image you have your center of curvature and the principal focus then you can apply any of the two rays uh, involving concave mirrors to locate your position of the object so i'll use uh the first uh, ray which said that a ray of light through c is reflected along the same path for concave mirrors so if i just connect uh, the tip of my image and my center of curvature then i just extend that line uh, until it it hits my mirror so a ray of light uh through c is reflected through the same path for concave mirror so this array of light which is passing through c upon hitting the mirror it is reflected through the same same path then i use a second uh, i use another ray which says that array through f uh, is reflected parallel to the principal axis for the case of concave mirrors so assuming my you just connect your f and a line or you just draw a line which is parallel to the principal axis of course passing through the tip of your uh, image then where it hits the mirror you draw another line connecting to f uh, such that you'll have that ray saying that array of light through f is reflected parallel to the principal axis then you extend this line until it meets your first ray so the point of intersection of these two rays represents the tip of your object remember if you used another ray for example array which says that uh, uh that array of light parallel to the principal axis is reflected through f so in that case you will just connect this line direct towards f then you draw that line straight until it hits your mirror then you draw another ray which is parallel to that it will actually still bring you here so you can just use any two relevant rays so there is no a specific uh, way of just using two rays you just take any two appropriate rays they will help you locate you either your image or your object so here you are using that array of light uh, through f is reflected 
parallel to the principal axis. So the point of intersection of those two rays represents the tip of your object. It represents the tip of your object. Then the object must always be connected to the principal axis. It must be perpendicular to the principal axis and parallel to your mirror, whether it is a concave or a convex mirror. So because it is also a concave mirror, then it means the image that is formed in this case is actually real. That is, if you compare with our previous diagrams, objects that are placed between C and F, they will always produce a, a real images. They will always produce real images. Also, we know that an object is always placed in front of the mirror. So there is no way that an object will be on the other side, whether you are dealing with a concave or a convex mirror. Then after locating my image now, we can answer the questions. Part A, we are required to find the position of the object. So position of the object represents the distance from the object towards the pole. So the position of the object will be this distance here, the distance from the object measured from the pole. So horizontally, we did say that four boxes were representing 20 centimeters. That is based on my uh, focal length. Then what about from the object I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0.2. This was to be 0.2. It's only that I'm not using an ideal graph paper. But you draw it uh, graphically well, accurately, you'll find that it is at the 4.2 box. So if four boxes are representing 20 centimeters, what about 5.2 boxes? So this will be 5.2 boxes divided by four boxes times 20 centimeters, which is equivalent to 26 centimeters. So the position of the object is actually 26 centimeters from the mirror. Then part B, we are required to find the linear magnification. So we've just look at, looked at the formula for linear magnification, which stated that uh, magnification is equals to V over U. That is the uh, image distance divided by the object distance, which is also equal to height of the image over height of the object. So V represents the image distance. That is the distance from the image measured from the pole. So the image distance we were actually given from the question, it was uh, 80 centimeters. Then the object distance, we have calculated it as 26 centimeters. So 80 centimeters divided by 26 centimeters, you will get approximately 3.0769. So this is the magnification. Alternatively, you can use height of the image over height of the object. So maybe height of the object is around uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. So four boxes. So you can just say four boxes divided by uh, 2.5 boxes. Four boxes divided by 2.5 boxes you will still arrive at around uh, uh, 3.0769 uh, as your magnification so also remember that magnification is a ratio therefore it has no unit so it is just a constant value that way next we look at the mirror formula the mirror formula so to understand that we need to conduct an experiment which is involving to investigate the relationship between u v and f for a concave mirror so the apparatus required are one a concave mirror b you need an object which in this case you are using our candle then you also need a screen where your image will be formed you also need a meter ruler which is uh, calibrated so that whenever you move either the screen or the object you are able to know uh, what length uh, that is your object distance and also your image distance then after that you arrange the apparatus as shown here so to conduct this experiment, you first of all choose just a random object distance. Uh, you just select an unknown object distance, U. Then the screen can be moved until a clear inverted image is formed on it. So maybe you just move your object like the candle. You can move it either closer to the screen, to the concave mirror, or further from the concave mirror. Then you indicate that distance. So maybe if we first of all move it to 15 centimeter mark. Remember this is a meter rule, so you can easily measure the distances. So if the concave mirror maybe uh, is placed at the zero centimeter mark, then you just move 15 centimeters, uh, then you place your, uh, your candle there, which is your object. So when the object distance you is 15 centimeters, you adjust uh, your screen, you either move it closer to the object or further from the object until a sharp inverted image will be formed on the screen. That is the image of this uh, flame here. When a sharp inverted image is formed on the screen, then you measure, that is the position of the screen from the mirror to where that sharp image is formed. So the distance from the screen uh, where a sharp image has been formed measured from the 
mirror is represented by v which is the image distance why because the image will be formed on the screen so the distance of the screen from the mirror is representing our uh, image distance which is v so you indicate the value of v for that case then of course you also adjust the object distance maybe you increase it to 20 centimeters huh? so you move this object or your candle maybe further to the 20 20 centimeter mark then you also adjust the screen until a sharp uh, inverted image is formed on it so you indicate the position uh, the value of v where your screen will be formed that is the distance of the screen uh, measured from the mirror then of course you continue to other values maybe you increase it to 25 centimeters you adjust the screen you also record the value of u and v that is after moving the screen then after that you compute the values of 1 over u that is the reciprocal of u like for this case it will be 1 by 15 you indicate its value here you also indicate the reciprocal of v 1 by the value of v that you have gotten here you indicate its value there then after that you do the same for 20 centimeters and for 25 centimeter mark then of course you fill this table then after that you find the summation of the reciprocals of u and the reciprocal of v uh, when you find those summation you realize that uh, the sum of the summation of u and the reciprocal of u and the reciprocal of v will always be equivalent to the reciprocal of the focal length of the mirror therefore we can conclude that the relationship between u v and f is that one divided by the focal length is equals to the reciprocal of uh, object distance plus the reciprocal of the image distance so this is what we are calling our mirror formula so 1 over f is equals to 1 over u plus 1 over v next we look at uh, sign conventions that are involved in uh, uh, applying the mirror formula so first of all you must uh, always remember that all distances are measured from the mirror as the origin that is maybe to measure the object distance it will be the distance of the object from the pole or from the mirror then the image distance will always be the distance from the image measured from the pole or from the mirror because the pole is already located on the mirror then the distance of distances of real objects and real images are considered to be positive so whenever an, a real image or a real object is formed then the distances from that is the object distance and the image distance will always be a positive value for example if the image is formed 20 centimeters uh, for the case of uh, 20 centimeters in front of the mirror then in that case the distance will be positive 20 centimeters so distances of real objects and real images are always considered to be positive remember that real images are those that are formed on the screen uh, or the, they are images that are formed by actual intersection of ray uh, real rays while virtual images are formed by uh, apparent intersection of rays and virtual images are not formed on the screen instead in most cases they will be formed behind the screen or behind the mirror maybe like for the case of uh, a plane mirror if you look at your face you observe yourself through a concave mirror uh, through a plane mirror you realize that your image will always be formed behind that mirror so the image is behind the mirror but you cannot touch it uh, uh, so it is virtual or it is imaginary it is imaginary then distances of virtual objects and virtual images are considered to be negative yeah virtual images in most cases they will be formed behind the mirror so because they are behind the mirror we are measuring the, the distance from the mirror but towards the behind the mirror hence the word negative so negative is just indicating the direction that we are measuring the distance from the mirror behind the mirror but if it is real objects or real images they are always formed in front of the mirror so that is a positive then a concave mirror has a real principal focus and therefore positive focal length so real principal focus is the focus that is in front of the mirror so we did say that for concave mirrors they will always have real uh, center of curvatures and real principal focus because they are images in most cases they are formed in front of the mirror so a concave mirror it has a real principal focus and therefore a positive focal length so if you are told that the focal length of a concave mirror is 20 centimeters then f will be equal to positive 20 centimeters while a convex mirror with a virtual principal focus has a negative focal length so if you are told that the focal length of a given a convex mirror is maybe 15 centimeters so it means your f will be equal to 
negative 15 centimeters why because a convex mirror it has a virtual principal focus and therefore a negative focal length a negative focal length that means that the radius of curvature for convex mirrors in most cases it also it will also be negative because it is measured the center of curvature is always behind the mirror that is for the case of uh, convex mirrors next we look at an example involving the mirror formula so the example reads that an object is placed a 18 centimeters b 6 centimeters from a concave mirror of focal length 12 centimeters Roman 1 determined the position and nature of the image formed in each case, B, magnification in each case. So if I start with the part A, first of all, we are dealing with a concave mirror. So U and V will always be positive. So we are told that for part A, the image, di the object distance is 18 centimeters. So U will always be 18 centimeters. Remember also for convex mirrors, U will always be 18 centimeters. Why? Because the, the object is always placed in front of the mirror. It is the image distance that can either be negative or positive depending whether the image is formed behind the mirror or in front of the mirror. So if an image is formed behind the mirror, in that case V will always be a negative value. But the image, uh, that is, if an image is formed on the same side as the object, then V will always be positive. But if an image is always formed uh, on the opposite side as you are object then v in that case will be a negative that is if the object is in front the front side of the mirror then the image is at the back side of the mirror then in that case v will always be negative because the image is behind the mirror then f is positive 12 centimeters that is the focal length why because we are dealing with a concave mirror if it was a convex mirror then f we will use f as negative 12 centimeters then the next is just to substitute in the mirror formula which stated that 1 over focal length is equals to the reciprocal of object distance plus the reciprocal of image distance so 1 over f f is 12 centimeters so 1 over positive 12 is equals to u is 18 centimeters that is for part a 1 over 18 plus 1 over v then i want to make 1 over v subject of the formula so i'll take 1 over 18 to the other side when it crosses the equal signs it becomes a negative so that we have 1 over 12 minus 1 over 18 being equal to this other side we have remained with 1 over v so you take 1 over 12 minus 1 over 18 you will get 1 over 36 so we have 1 over v is equals to 1 over positive 36 then you take reciprocal on, on both sides you will get v is equals to positive 36 centimeters alternatively you can also just cross multiply you will find v being equal to positive 36 centimeters. So whenever V is positive, what does that particular, what does that mean? It means that V, that is the image, is formed on the same side of the screen as the image, as the image. Or it simply means that the image formed is actually real, or it is formed by intersection of real rays of light. So the image distance, we are required to find the position of the image. So the position of the image is that the image is formed 36 centimeters from the mirror or it is formed 36 centimeters in front of the mirror. Yeah, that is whenever it is positive. But if it was V is negative 36, then we will say that the image is formed behind the mirror, 36 centimeters behind the mirror. Then since V is positive, then the image formed is actually real. So the nature of the image is that the image formed is real. Why? It, because if it's a positive, it means the image is formed on the same side as the object so the image is actually real because this is also a concave mirror then part b uh when the object distance is six centimeters so it means u is six centimeters then f is still 12 centimeters because it is still the same same concave mirror but we said if it was a, a convex mirror then f will be negative 12. so here to find uh, f we just substitute the values in the mirror formula so the reciprocal of focal length must be equal to the reciprocal of object distance plus the reciprocal of the image distance then when i substitute the values i have 1 over 12 which was the focal length is equals to 1 over 6 6 is my new u here plus 1 over v i make 1 over v subject of the formula then i i will take 1 over 6 to the other side so whenever it cross an equal sign it becomes a negative so i have 1 over 12 minus 1 over 6 being equal to 1 over v so you take 1 over 12 minus 1 over 6, you'll actually get negative 1 over 
12 which is equals to 1 over v so you take reciprocals on both sides or you cross multiply you will find v is equals to negative 12 centimeters so the position of the image is that the image is formed 12 centimeters from the mirror or we can say the image is formed 12 centimeters behind the mirror behind the mirror because if it is a negative it means the image is on the opposite side as the object that is measured from the mirror so the image is formed 12 centimeters behind the mirror behind the mirror then the nature of the image formed is that the image formed uh, because v is negative and this is a concave mirror whenever you are dealing with a concave mirror if the object is on the opposite side with the image then that such an object will always be virtual so since v is negative the image formed is virtual it is virtual so virtual means that the image is formed by apparent or imaginary intersection of the rays and therefore such an image cannot be formed on the screen instead it is formed behind the screen or behind the mirror then uh, roman 2 are required to find magnification in each case so for part a uh, magnification of course is v over u that is the image distance of an object distance so for part a the object distance we found it at positive 36 centimeters then the image distance was actually 18 centimeters so you find the quotient of 36 and 18 you will find positive 2 so that this is the magnification so this one simply means that the image formed is twice as large as the object so if the uh, that is the image is magnified by 2 positive 2 then for Roman 2 the magnification will be V over U V is negative 12 u is 6 so v uh, that is the object distance for image distance for part b was actually negative 12 so negative 12 by by 6 you get negative 2 so the magnification is negative 2 so this one simply means that the image is diminished or the image is half the size of the object and uh, let me give you an exercise you try and see whether you understood what we have just uh, dealt with so the exercise question one reads that a concave mirror of focal length 10 centimeters forms a virtual image 5 centimeters high and 30 centimeters from the mirror. By scale drawing, determine the position of the object. So in this case, do not use the mirror formula. So draw it graphically by scale drawing. So the expected under here is 7 centimeters from the mirror. Then the height of the image, the expected under is 12.5 centimeters tall. Then the magnification of the image, the expected under is 2.4. So try uh, drawing this graphically and see whether you arrive at the same same answer. In case you are ha having trouble solving that, just drop a comment on this video uh, in my channel. Then uh, for sure I'm here to respond and help where necessary. Question 2 reads that a concave mirror of focal length 10 centimeters forms a real image four times the size of the object. If the object height is 5 cm, determine graphically A, the object distance, the expected under is 12.5 cm, then the image distance, the expected under is 50 cm. So maybe just to give you a hint or a clue is that 4 times means magnification in this case will be 4. So try working out and see whether you get the same. Then uh, question 3 in the exercise reads that an object of height 2 cm is placed 25 cm in front of a concave mirror so a real image is formed 75 centimeters from the mirror calculate a magnification expected under is 3 cent 3 then the height of the image the expected under is 6 uh, so in this case uh, here you can use the mirror formula so it is not uh, graphically or by use of scale drawing then question 4 is that a lady holds a large concave mirror of focal length 1 meter comma 80 centimeters from her face state two characteristic of the image form so you must sketch uh, your ray diagrams and see how it will appear for you to determine the nature of the image so the others expected us are that the nature of the image is virtual magnified and erect or upright so try and see whether you get the same then the last question on our exercise reads that a concave mirror has a radius of curvature 20 centimeters find its focal length so here they're just testing you to see whether you know the relationship between the focal length and the radius of curvature so the expected under is 10 centimeters so try working out these exercises and see whether you get the same unders as mine so in case you are having challenges as i said just drop a comment on my channel and i'm there to 
respond and help where necessary. So we've come to the end of our class today, but we need to discuss the quote of the day. So the quote of the day stated that, just because you believe that your opinion is right, does not necessarily mean that the opinions of others are wrong. And remember that number nine or integer nine becomes number six or integer six when viewed upside down. So the quote is just inviting us to accept, uh, to put ourselves in the shoes of others. Uh, that is to be compassionate and uh, have the views of other people. So the quote is inviting us to decolonize our minds by not accepting what is perceived as a reality and what is perceived to be the truth by the norms of our society. So the quote is just encouraging us to be uh, more philosophical. That is not just to accept the realities, rather to create our own realities. And the truth in this scenario or in this case refers to saying what it is that is and also saying what is not that is not. Yeah, I know I've confused you, so I would repeat that. Uh, we are saying that the truth in this case refers to saying what it is that is and also saying what is not that is not. Yeah. So the quote is also encouraging us to think divergently and create our own realities rather than just blindly accepting what is perceived as the reality and as the truth by the society. Then usually when we see someone shedding tears, we assume that they are sad or they are crying. Forgetting that we also shed tears while laughing. Then usually when we see great people, we assume that they are either from a rich family or they have a special talent. Forgetting that sometimes hard work beats talent every time talent doesn't work hard. Then when someone goes quiet on social media, we assume that they are depressed uh, that they are depressed or we assume that something is not right in their lives but we are forgetting that some of us are introverts who need quiet environments in order to recharge their energy and remember that it can either be viewed as depression or deep rest so the choice is yours and lastly every new person you meet in your life knows something that you don't know yet but they will never tell you until you accept that you don't know and ask for their help. This is Kind Tuition Academy. Kindly hit that subscription button on YouTube. Thank you.